Hey folks, uh, today I'd like to uh, provide you with another book review. Uh, and so the book in question is this one, Hand Psychology by Andrew Fitzherbert. Uh, so this was a book that I was first introduced to more than 20 years ago, I guess, uh, when I took my first uh, palmistry course from Hart Defoe. Uh, palmistry, also known as Hasta Samudrika, uh, the science for the study of markings in the palms. Highly respected and evolved uh, practice in India. Uh, and uh, an absolutely, you know, beautiful complement to Jyotish. So anyone who wants to be a consulting astrologer, Jyotishi, I highly recommend that you get acquainted with palmistry. You know, in the modern Western world, America and elsewhere, um, if you're at a party and, you know, you announce to anybody listening that you are an astrologer, uh, people will say, oh, okay, that's interesting. Can you guess my sign? Um, whereas in India, should you announce that you're an astrologer, uh, Jyotishi, uh, people will immediately show you their hands and say, what do you see here? There's no disconnect in their minds because if you announce yourself to be uh, a Jyotishi, it's like saying you are um, something of a... Um, a seer who has, um, you know, if you're properly educated, you have an education in more than a single discipline, not just astrology, but uh, palmistry as well, and perhaps Ayurveda as well, and other things that are, you know, ancillary and supplementary to uh, astrology, you know, Nimitta, the study of omens, uh, and so on and so forth. So um, from Dating from that point, you know, some 20 plus years ago, when I first took that course uh, from Hart, I immediately began doing palmistry, mini palmistry readings with every single astrology client that came to me. It was merely a question of expanding my offering from simple astrology to um, including, um, you know, a 15, 20, 30 minute uh, reading of the palms prior to the astrological reading. It was a kind of get-to-know-you process. Uh, and it proved to be, you know, extremely informative to me, but more to the point, informative to the clients as well, too. And much to my chagrin at the closing of my 90-minute sessions, um, you know, 30 minutes of palmistry and 90, uh, 60 minutes of astrology, I'd say, you know, any feedback? And they'd say, well, the palmistry part was <laughs> fantastic. Um, and I don't think it's because my uh, astrological component was deficient, but people naturally relate to palmistry in a more immediate way because, well, you know, you carry your hand around with you. You can point to the lines on the hand and explain the basics of that. And people can... You know, it's a more tangible um, study and less abstract, far less abstract than is astrology, which, you know, obliges you to imagine planets in the sky spread around a 360 degree dial above and below the uh, send, uh, above and below the horizon and, you know, in different spatial uh, relationships with each other. With palmistry, it's all right there in the hand. And, you know, the beauty of it from the point of view of the practitioner is that nobody needs to call their mom and ask what time they were born or find out, you know, do they still have their hospital birth certificate in order to determine the time. The hand is right there and readily available on a moment's notice to start reading. So, this is a wonderful book. Um, you know, there's so many books out there on palmistry. But if you can get your hands on this book, and, you know, this is the tricky part. This book is long since out of print. You're going to have to check Amazon and use bookstores and wherever you can to see if you can find it. But it's really quite worthwhile. It's written by an Australian um, uh, a palmist uh, with whom Hart was personally acquainted. And I'm sure that's not the reason why he endorsed this book. He endorsed it because it was comprehensive. So, you know, I'll just scan through some of the chapters here. You know, there's an outline in history of uh, hand psychology. Now, although Fitzherbert was originally introduced to palmistry, by some Asian in uh, Singapore who read his palm with, uh, with uh, great insights and it piqued his interest to study it on his own. 
Um, he sort of gives short shrift to the Indian influence in palmistry, which goes back, you know, probably thousands of years. Um, and he really doesn't give it as much um, acknowledgement as I think uh, Indian, astro uh, Indian palmistry deserves. And yet this conforms, uh, the principles in this book conform um, pretty much to the classic aspects um, and indications in um, Hasta. So he's got some catchy sounding titles here, Palmistry in Your Love Life, you know, basically looking at, um, you know, the, the heart line and uh, some of the fingers that, you know, sort of give indications about, you know, how amorous a person will be. Uh, relationship problems, uh, a little bit more on, on that aspect of it, you know, the little finger indicating uh, some of those issues. Uh, you know, smoking habits and, and other health issues that may be, um, you know, uh, indicated uh, in, in the palm. Um, how your hands can solve your employment problems. Uh, like I say, a catchy title, but really there's an honest breakdown here of what kind of hands indicate, uh, you know, the business type, uh, the artistic type, you know, the philosophical academic type. And these are all very useful constructs to apply in your palmistry reading. Um, you know, how to deal with difficult people, you know, showing um, things in the palm uh, or the hand, like the so-called clubbed thumb, the murderer's thumb, or a very stiff hand for a very stubborn person, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the search for meaning and religion in your hands, um, you know, markings that indicate spirituality uh, or, you know, evolution uh, in a uh, person's behavior, moral education. Why is my life a mess? <laughs> That's a good one. It should attract a lot of people. But the real guts, um, uh, the heart and soul of this book is, is, is chapter 9, which is a teach yourself chapter complete with 10 lessons. And it really drills down into all the basics uh, that are, you know, important to get a grip on astrology. Huh. No pun intended there with getting a grip on palmistry. Um, so uh, he breaks down the uh, four elemental hand types, fire, earth, air, and water, uh, which is a simplified form of hand shape analysis, which uh, is, is Indian in origin. You know, the European models went on to get into five, six, and seven different kind of hand shapes. Uh, the four elemental uh, classification is simpler and, and very useful. And as I say, adheres to the, uh, the Indian system. And then he explores, you know, the meaning uh, of each of the fingers, you know, all of which are uh, related to one of the other of the visible planets, you know, index finger for Jupiter, middle finger Saturn, ring finger Sun, little finger Mercury, uh, the thumb of Venus, uh, the heel of the palm of the moon, and the, and the plane running through uh, across the hand uh, for Mars. Uh, he breaks those down. He also talks about, um, you know, the major lines, which are uh, lifeline, heart line, headline, and fate line. Uh, the four lines that you'll find in almost everybody's hand. Uh, and he discusses, you know, the, uh, the variations uh, on those uh, various lines and, and what their meaning is. Uh, he gets into the minor lines as well, too, you know, which are things like uh, Ring of Solomon, uh, girdle of Venus, uh, the health line, or, or also called the Mercury line. Uh, those don't appear in all hands, uh, but they appear, you know, in sufficient, uh, with sufficient frequency in so many hands, you know, that it behooves you to become acquainted with them. Uh, he gets into discussion of the fingerprints as well, too, of which there are, you know, you can break it down to three essential types, which are whorl, which is sort of a circular target shaped, uh, a loop, uh, and an arch type print. Uh, and there are variations on those three classics. But he, he explores those, uh, the meanings of them and the frequencies thereof. Uh, all of which, you know, the sum total of this is really quite a valuable book. Now, after I, you know, this was the first book that I ever acquired on, on uh, palmistry. And when I subsequently taught classes in palmistry, I used this book again and again, and I still refer to it on occasion. Over the years, I've, you know, got way ahead of myself and bought dozens of other palmistry books, and I'm slowly working my way through them all. In fact, I might soon have to buy more palmistry books because I'm almost finished it, the, the two dozen that I bought. 
Uh, and I'll speak to some of those on another day because many of those are classics in the Western world and, and worthwhile. But this one, you know, um, I guess I owe an allegiance to it because, you know, it was the first one that I read and really absorbed, um, you know, the, the manifold meanings of so much that is hidden in the palm. I think it's a great way to start. Um, and it adheres to, you know, the Indian system. The only glitch in this whole pitch is that it's hard to find. So if your interest is piqued on this, uh, start looking for it. It's really a very worthwhile addition to your library. Okay, that's it for today. See you another time.